Welcome to today's lesson over transformation of graphs. As you can see, I've already graphed these first three equations. When you have y equaling x squared, you will have a u-shaped graph, which is also referred to as a parabola. y equaling the square root of x will be as graphed in which you only graph is only in quadrant one y equaling the square root of x will always be a v shape so it comes to a point at the origin the goal of this section is to take such graphs as these and slide them left and right up and down or reflect them over the x-axis or the y-axis now Suppose I look at y equaling the square root of x in the middle, and here would be a table of values which I have listed below. Now suppose they ask me to do a translation or a partial transformation in which they want me to move this graph to the right three units. Well, to move it to the right three units, each point would move to the right three units. For instance, the point at the origin moved to the right three units would move to the point three zero. I'm going to draw another table to show what the points look like after you have moved right three. This new point would be three comma zero after it's moved right three units. The point one one moved right three units would move to the point four one and the point 4, 2 moved to the right 3 units would become the point 7, 2. So when you move right, you only change the x values in the table. The y values remain the same. And you add 3 to each x value. Your ultimate graph would look like the one I just drew in this purplish color. Now let's do another transformation in the graph on the far right, which is our absolute value graph. In this case, it's asking us to move left two and also down three. Let's look at the movement of left two. If I take the point of the origin and move it left two, move it left two, the new x value from the origin, the new x value will be negative two. Then, if I move that point down three, down one, two, three, it creates the new point, which is the point negative two, negative three. So left two subtracted two from the x value, and down three subtracted three from the y value. So if I move the point one, one to the left two, one, two, and down three, one, two, three, my new point will be the point negative one, negative two. In other words, the x value would be this x value. I would subtract two, one minus two is negative one, and the y value one, I would subtract three, one minus three is negative two. So again with 2, 2, if I move it left 2, this point, left 2, and down 3, I would then say 2 minus 2 is 0, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So with all of this movement, I would be at 0, negative 1. So my V shape would look as I'm drawing it in pink which is the graph moved left two and down three. Now, in addition to sliding left and right, I can also take a graph and reflect it over an axis, like the x-axis or the y-axis. Look at number 19, which I have changed a little bit. I'm going to start with the graph of the square root of x, and you can see the table here along the left side but I want to reflect it over the y-axis. If I take the point one, one and reflect it over the y-axis, it would then sit at the point negative one, one. If I take the point 
4, 2 and reflect it over the y-axis, it would then become the point negative 4, 2, and your graph would look like the one I've just drawn in purple. So let's write the ordered pair of points. It went from 1, 1 to negative 1, 1, and from 4, 2 to negative 4, 2. So when you reflect over the y-axis, the x values become negative. That is logical because if you're moving from quadrant 1 to quadrant 2, your x values become negative in quadrant 2. So xy reflected over the y-axis becomes negative xy, meaning your x values become negative. If on number 20 I reflect over the x-axis, let's take these points and see what their new values will be. The point 1, 1 reflected down over the x-axis would become the point 1, negative 1. The point 4, 2 reflected over the x-axis would become the point 4, negative 2 and the resultant graph would look like this in pink. What I note about the ordered pairs is that the x values remain the same, but the y values become negative. This is logical because if you take a point from quadrant 1 and move it to quadrant 4, only the y value changes sign. Therefore, when xy is reflected over the x-axis, it becomes x negative y. Now let's take a look at an equation and see how the translations appear in an equation rather than the ordered pairs. Let's look at this g of x equaling the square root of x minus 2 minus 3. Well, this parent function is just the square root of x which as before goes through 1, 1, 0, 0, and 4, 2, and here's a sketch of it. Now if I come in here and I alter or I make changes around the x variable such as x minus 2 where the minus 2 is grouped with the x under the radical, this means a motion of left or right two units because you're kind of grouped with the x variable and x motions are left and right. The translations left and right are always the opposite of what you're going to think they should be. So minus 2 is actually right 2. So a subtraction is right, opposite of what you think it would be. Then if I alter my graph a little bit more, and outside of the radical I put a minus 3 on the far right side of this equation, this is my up-down movement and a minus 3 is a logical translation of down 3. So if I take my graph and I move it right 2 and down 3, which I'm going to do in this kind of pink color, the origin, the point 0, 0 to the right 2 and down 3 would be relocated to the point 2, negative 3. The 1, 1 moved right 2 and down 3. 3 would be relocated at 3, negative 2, and the point 4, 2 moved to the right 2 and down 3 would therefore be at 6, negative 1, and this would be the resultant graph translated to the right 2 and down 3. The pink line would be this g of x graphed. Now another example which I have written in and I have named it h of x maybe I will call this 1a. I would also like to graph this one. Now this one parent function is not the square root of x, the parent function is x squared. So I'm going to start with y equaling x squared which goes through 1 1, negative 1 1, 2 4, and negative 2 4 and this is my u-shaped graph also known as a parabola. Now, the translations in this equation, the first translation is x plus 5 being squared. Now, this plus 5 is grouped with x, and so this is horizontal movement left or right, and horizontal movement is always opposite of what you think it should be, and the plus 5 actually means to the left 5. 
Now if I come and alter this quadratic equation a little more by putting a plus 6 on the outside end, this is my up-down movement being up 6. So to graph this, I'm going to take each point, the origin, to the left 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which would be a little bit off my graph. Let's take another point, say 1, 1, to the left 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 6. One more point, let's do the negative 1, 1 to the left 5, and up 6. And that should give me just enough points that I can sketch the translated parabola or quadratic equation to the left 5 and up 6. And so that new line would be the graph of h of x, which started as x squared and then was translated. Now, number 2 is interesting in the way it's presented. It says use the graph of f of x to graph f of negative x. This is a reflection. And the way you know this is that the x is replaced by negative x. As we mentioned above, if x is replaced by negative x, you're kind of moving from quadrant 1 to quadrant 2, which means that you are reflecting over the y-axis. So this would mean you need to come in here and you need to reflect this graph over the y-axis.